Hey there, are you looking for a cool, fun place to hang out with your peers? Specifically, your developer peers? Well, whether you're an artist, a programmer, or just a hobbyist enjoying your craft, I welcome you to the Indie Allies. The Indie Allies is a place you can go and chat about game development or your art stuff and just show off your work. It's not a Dark Slayer TV Discord, it's just a place for us to hang out. We also plan on having our own little Indie, Indie E3, where we're gonna get everyone's games that they're working on and do like a, a live presentation of like all the trailers and stuff. It's just a fun place to hang out. Anyway, let's get to the episode. This video was released one day early for my Patreon patrons. Link in the description. Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of creating a horror game from scratch. Today we're going to be doing some really simple stuff that needs to be done um, to give myself a break and to give you a break after the last two episodes of just craziness. Plus, I think it's something a lot of you will enjoy and be able to use in your games as well. The first thing I want to address is whenever we hit the play button, one, our flashlight's pretty small. Now, to create a feeling of claustrophobia, um, some of you might want that real small scope. I want mine to be a little bit bigger. Uh, I also want to add it to a bone, so that way it actually moves with my hand and stuff, as well as add a texture to it, so that way it actually looks like it's going through a flashlight. And a button, why not? Let's turn it on and off with a button. So in order to do all of that, we need to head over to our BP first person character, so we'll head there first. If you remember, if we go over to the viewport, you'll see that we have the flashlight here. It's kind of just pointing out of the camera which isn't really what we need it to do anymore. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go over here to the parent socket and uh, I'm gonna make this a part of the, uh, to attach it to the hand, let's go over to this parent socket, hit this little like, so, like search thing and I'm gonna attach mine to hand underscore and then R and you'll see it's gonna be put in a really weird location. We don't want it there at all. So let's hit E. Let's turn that bad boy around, like about like that. And with it turned around, let's go ahead and drop it, put it right about where our hand would be. Maybe even a little bit left slightly, just so that way it doesn't hit the tool. And then as you can see, I've actually got this really weird angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my snap on the rotation up here at the top down to five degrees. I'm gonna pull up that rotation tool and let's see if we can't get it about straight. That's a lot more straight than it was. So we'll go ahead and hit save and compile. So now the idle animation includes the flashlight. It'll, it'll be moving with us. Uh, let's also take the attenuation radius. Let's crank it slightly. So let's take the attenuation radius and maybe do like 2000. Or I take that back. Leave it to about 1500. We don't want the attenuation radius. We want the outer cone. Let's bring this up to like uh, 45. That might be too much. Let's do 30. We'll try 30. We'll start there. Now we'll hit save and compile. And just to see what we just did, let's go ahead and hit play. You can see the area is a lot bigger now. And if you look closely, let's get like real close. You can see how the actual movement of the hands is being applied to where the light is on the wall to give us a much more realistic look like we're actually holding on to a flashlight. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to apply a texture to the light so that way it actually looks like it's going through a lens. Like we can kind of see that refraction, refraction, we can kind of see that reflection or refraction, whatever you want to call it, of the, the glass and how it's like not perfect. It's got some imperfections in it. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this image here and I will link it in the description below. You have access to this image as well. Once you have it imported into your pro uh, project, go ahead and open it up. We're gonna need to check a couple of settings. One, make sure there is no MIP maps. And two, where it says compression settings, see where this says default? We're gonna change this over to grayscale, and we're gonna go ahead and hit save, and we can go ahead and close that now. We'll go back into the content browser, right click on the flashlight, and we're gonna hit create material. I'm gonna call mine matte underscore flashlight. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. With the material open, make sure this right hand box here, the big long one, is selected. And on the left hand side where it says material domain, we're gonna open that up and we're gonna change it to a light function. 
with light function selected let's go ahead and move this over slightly let's disconnect it move it down and actually plug it into the emissive color once that's complete just go ahead and hit save now back over into our BP first person character with our flashlight selected let's scroll down and you'll see we can select a light function material well I have a feeling you know which one we're gonna pick Matt underscore flashlight and we will select it we'll hit save and compile now let's head back into the office and take a look at what we just did there we go see now you can see the imperfections of the lens actually being shown in the light very subtle but very nice and again we have that animation in there which is nice as well now let's add a button now you guys have done this before but just in case you don't remember let's hit edit and go to project settings once this opens up we'll head down to the input and uh, we need to create a ax an action mapping for the flashlight I'm gonna name mine f uh, I'm gonna name mine toggle flashlight instead of just flashlight, because I'm sure we're gonna use just flashlight for other stuff. And I'm gonna put mine to F, big surprise, and we'll close that out, and we'll head back to the BP first person character. We'll head to the event graph. Uh, what do we have here? See, we have line trace, we have default movement, brain ref and stuff. Okay, so we don't really have a controls section. Well, I guess we do, default moving coding. So under that, let's go ahead and create a custom event or I lied instead of a custom event let's just type in toggle flashlight and that should give us our action event then we'll create a custom event and we'll just call it toggle flashlight which luckily both those can have the same name and then of course when the button is pressed we are going to um, call the custom event we just made grab both those press Q straighten them out I'm gonna leave a comment toggle flashlight when pressing F changes color to white so I can actually freaking see it then with toggle flashlight this is as simple as it's gonna be grab your flashlight uh, what you're the first thing you're gonna do is actually pull out and say play sound uh, 2d is fine considering our flashlight is gonna be in our hand I mean if you really want that level of detail you can do play sound at location I don't really care it's not gonna be a thing either way I don't have the sound yet, um, but we're gonna put it there because we want a sound to play. Um, but then after we play the sound, all we have to do is toggle the visibility of the flashlight, just like that. We'll grab it, comment it, say, uh, turn flashlight on and off, but also play the noise of the button being Pressed or the switch, whatever you call it, you know, like like forward and back. Is that a switch? Is that a button? I'm not sure. But now when we head in, we can get near the wall. F F F F F F F F F. So now our, our our flashlight has a whole bunch of functionality. It looks good. And as you can see, by the way, walking, you can really see that animation of it being in our hand. Um Yeah, that's some major flashlight improvements. Let's do some more stuff. Sadly, this one I'm not going to include in the description below because it's just my own custom file and I don't really have a file sharing website. But um, basically, just go out and find yourself a reticle because something that we don't have right now is a reticle to show where we're looking, like the exact center point. So like trying to pick one of these up, you really have to like guess where the center is. Wait for that prompt to pop up. Ah, there we go. And then still, I'm not quite getting it. There we go. And then now I'm actually capable of uh, toggling my tool. But we need to add a reticle so that's easier. There's tons of free ones, I promise. Just go look. In fact, I don't remember where I got it, but like, look at all of these. I remember it was like in a pack. It might be from. I actually think it might be from Free Game Art. Let's check it out. Let's see. Crosshair. I've searched it here before. There it is. It's right here. So you know what? It is in the description below. I'll leave a link to this. But always remember, we're online. We just downloaded something. We need to know what the Creative Commons is. It's CC0 public domain. Since we're gonna actually be combating the ghost a little bit, I'm gonna use image three because it kind of gives me that ghost recon vibe. So I'm gonna pull this in here 
and it's pretty much all I have to do with it. Now we're gonna head over to our blueprints folder. We're gonna go into the UI folder and uh, we're gonna create a new widget, which is under user interface. We want the widget blueprint and we are going to call this widget underscore crosshair. We're gonna go ahead and open that up. Let me bring this up. And once we're in here, we're gonna add a canvas so that way we know where we're placing things. Then we need to add an image. So we'll bring that in. The anchor needs to be the dead center of the screen. The size, I'm gonna go with like, yeah, 64 by 64, which will probably be too big, um, but that can be adjusted. The position is actually gonna be negative 32, negative 32, because that is half back and half up, because the anchor of the image is always the very top left. So when you do half left and half up, you're dead center. I hope that made sense. Quick intermission, I am doing YouTube Shorts now. If you like YouTube Shorts or just want quick Unreal Engine 5 tips, they're in my Shorts and they're fantastic. Not these Shorts, but the YouTube Shorts. Anyway, with it in position, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open up the brush and you'll see we have an image size and an image. I'm gonna set the image uh, to 64 by 64 and I will go ahead and uh, let's go grab that crosshair, image three here and drop that in. And then as we scroll in, you'll see that it is currently actually there. Now, what I like to do, because it's a horror game, is I actually like to create a red vibe. I think red is a very, it's a dangerous color. It makes you uneasy. So what we can actually do, since this is white, is if we go over here to the tint and we click on the tint, if we just go ahead and bring blue to like, I don't know, 0.5 and bring green to like 0.5 you'll see that it maintains it's white but it has a little bit of red to it just a little bit of red to it plus it kind of makes it more easy to see on the screen as well so now that that's there let's go ahead and save and compile and then we need to add this to the screen now the reason we're not going to add this on event begin play and the first person character which you would think would make sense because it's the player, it's always gonna be there. It's not, because what happens when you're on the main menu? So instead, a better way to do it is any level that is going to actually use the crosshair. What I like to do is actually create an entire section of code um, purely made on creating widgets and putting them on the screen, and then having the level call those widgets whenever it needs them so that way per level basis, I can choose which widgets are on screen. So let's just like go off to the left here. We'll do it like on this side. I'm gonna create a custom event and I'm gonna call it create widget underscore crosshair. This is just my naming convention. Do it however you'd like. Out of this, we're gonna pull out and we're actually gonna use the create widget, but not specifically crosshair, cause that's ours. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create this widget. Uh, for the class, now we want the widget crosshair. And then all we have to do, by the way, is pull out of this and type in add to viewport like that. Grab it all, hit Q, straighten it out. Then of course, press C, get a comment going, creating the crosshair and placing it on screen. So basically in order for our level blueprint to have access to this, it's actually quite simple. Up here at the top, we need to open up this little grid looking one and hit open level blueprint. And we should already have access to the player ref. Yep, right there, perfect. Uh, and since this is a level where we want the crosshair, we need to make a new custom event and we're just gonna call it add crosshair. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out of add crosshair. And actually, I lied. We're gonna get the player ref from the left-hand side, get a git, and out of the player ref, we are going to create widget crosshair, just like that. Let's make a comment, add crosshair to the screen. Then we'll go to the top and out of the event begin play. Uh, delay, player ref, instance ref, create UI. Oh, I have something that's creating UI. Oh, the tooltip from earlier. That's fine. These can be different events. It's not a big deal. Uh, add crosshair. I will say if you're someone that wants to be super organized, maybe watch your naming conventions because obviously if this says create UI, 
your instinct is it's adding all of it, right? But I made two separate. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna F2 here. I'm gonna just call this add tooltip. So that way, instead of us thinking it's making all the UI, we'll change it. Uh, because, you know, sometimes we might want the tooltip but not want the crosshair. So I like to keep them separated. But anyway, let's go ahead and hit save and compile and uh, let's hit play. And you'll note, thank God, now we have a crosshair and we can go up and look how easy it is to actually pick these up now. Oh my goodness, we have so many of them. I might, will that let me, does that cycle? No, it still cycles between one and two. Perfect. Oh, it's because we added unique, duh. Anyway, we got a crosshair, we got a flashlight. Now some of you might hate that the flashlight is not perfectly on the crosshair. You'll just have to tweak it. I'm not going to, I'm not bothered by it, but I can see where someone might be like, I don't like that. You just have to tweak it. Not the crosshair, the flashlight. Leave the crosshair where it's at. Uh-oh, the ghost killed us. Now I'm gonna do a quick montage of me making the holes in the walls just a little bit bigger because as if you remember, I can only fit through this one. So I'm gonna go through and make sure all my sizes are that size. Okay, so now that those are the appropriate size, I'm not gonna retexture them just this second, but what I am gonna do is, do you remember when we made our door? We need to now make our door actually fit uh, the door properly. So what we're gonna do is, I th think we just need to add two to this, which is really simple, but in order to do that, we need to go into here it is zero door sm let's go ahead and pull one of those into our world uh let's go ahead and go back into the cube grid is this lined up enough no oh no it's kind of like doing one of those things where like ugh. so this is what i'm gonna do i'm actually watch this we're gonna cheat we're gonna do one two three four five six because that's the width of the, the door there so I'm gonna watch this, I'm just gonna delete all the way down and then build back up. Shh, we're totally cheating. You know what, it works. And then hit accept. Oh my God, then we can delete this out. And now our door should fit the new larger hole. And I will go ahead and move these around to the other holes. Okay, so now we actually have appropriately sized doors uh, with actual uh, door holes to compensate and now we can actually get in and out. Oh, we can't. With the door there, it actually makes this the hole is completely unusable. Which by the way, the door is kind of leaving these creases. That's something we can deal with a little bit later. I'm not too worried about it. But in order to get through these holes, what I'm gonna do, because our character seems quite large, and it might be something that you guys don't know. So this big fat pill that you see that's like half invisible or mostly invisible is actually our hitbox. It's our collision. It's the thing keeping us from going through. But on the right hand side, you'll see that we have a radius. I'm actually gonna bring it down. We'll go down to like 32. And then when we hit save and compile, I bet we can fit right through these doors. We went on a diet, we ate the salad, we ate the tuna, and now we can fit through these larger doors, which is good because that's quite a lot of space that our character needed to get through, so awesome. Now we're gonna do something that I find really, really fun. This is probably gonna be the funnest part of the video, at least for me. We're gonna add a roof to this whole thing. Now I'm gonna cheat. You can do this like real hyper accurate if you want to. It's not necessary. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this far corner here, and then I'm gonna shift click over to here just so I can see where this corner is located. So what we want is this corner here, but I can't just click that corner. 
Oh no, how do I just click that corner? I guess it doesn't matter. Well, it does, because that's the origin. It doesn't... Okay, we'll do it in a couple pieces. I'm sorry. The game's yelling at me. So we'll click on that corner. We'll come to this corner. Shift click, press E. We're gonna click on this corner. Ah, shift click this corner, press E. And as you can see, what we're doing is we're building a ceiling. And the reason I love the ceiling is because now it's gonna start getting very dark in our level. And uh, we're gonna add some ways to add lighting to an interior structure, which looks a heck of a lot more neat than just the uh, roofless thing we were dealing with. I'm not gonna add a material just yet, but what I am gonna do is we are going to create a light and switch system. So something that a lot of people think that they need to do is put the light and the switch in the same blueprint, um, but that causes a lot of issues. So I'm gonna teach you how to make two separate blueprints and then have that switch also control as many lights as you want it to. It's actually quite simple. This is kind of disorganized, so I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new folder and I'm gonna call it lights. We're gonna go ahead and open up the lights. We're gonna go in here and we're gonna create a blueprint class of an actor. And uh, we're gonna call this BP underscore light. I'm then going to open that up. Uh. I'm gonna add a SM light, just like that. Oh, I'm silly, that's not how you do that. We're gonna add a static mesh and call it SM light. On the right hand side, I'm gonna go ahead and type in the word. Oh, they don't have a light, do they? They just have the wall lamp. That's fine, for now we'll use the wall lamp and we will consider changing it soon because right now it's also our motion detector. And then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna add a point light. Uh, which can be a child of the static mesh, that's fine. And we're actually gonna bring the point light out and up because if it's too close to the wall, it can cause a lot of issues. So you want it near the wall, but not like touching it, trust me. For now, that's fine. Let's go ahead and hit save and compile. And really all we need to do is um, delete all that. All we really need to do is we need to create a custom event called turn on, a custom event called turn off, and then add a boolean called broken, make that public, and then one more custom event called init. I know I'm throwing a lot at you at once, but I promise this is the easiest thing you're gonna do today, and it's so awesome and fun. Okay, out of init, what does init mean? It means initiation, so whenever the level starts, what we're gonna do is we're going to check and see if we've decided that this light is broken or not. You can make this random or you can just make it some lights are broken and some aren't. If this light is broken, then immediately, so true, it is broken, we're just gonna turn it off, right? And then, is the light broken? No, okay, we'll then turn it on. Pretty simple. We'll go ahead and pull this up. We'll create a comment. Uh, initiate, when the level starts, Turn on or off if broken. Then of course the turn on will be as simple as setting the visibility. However, with the turn on, we do need to check the broken status. So we'll go ahead and plug it into a branch. And if broken is false, then we will just go ahead and set the visibility of the point light to true. Let's go ahead and copy set visibility, copy and paste it down to turn off. And uh, instead of leaving new visibility to true, let's make it false. Let's go ahead and drag this down like that. We'll go ahead and comment this and just say, turn on the light if not broken. Then turn off the light. So pretty simple. Go ahead and hit save and compile. Basically what's gonna happen, which if you wanna go ahead and hit P, we, need, we do need to add the event begin play. So event begin play, and then you're just gonna call initiate or init. Um, so basically what's gonna happen is the level's gonna load, and if we decided that that light is just broken, then it'll never be able to turn on because it's broken. And since we made it public, we can make that decision in the world, of course. So we can just pull the BP light out. And then as you can see on the right hand side, it's either broken or not broken. But the good news about leaving it on anyway, means you can light this place like you would light a real building and then still make it creepy. What do I mean by that? Well, let's go ahead and change the level to lit. And uh, so, you know, if this was a, an actual building, 
Let's go ahead and bring this over, bring it up. Let's go ahead and do like a 180 with this bad boy. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna light the room really quick. Okay, so if this was a real building, real buildings aren't dark. And the good news about um, how we've just set up our light bulbs is we get to light the building up and while we're editing it, we get to see. We can see, we don't have to turn lights to unlit, we can just see. But because of how we set it up, if we want all three of these lights on this wall to be broken, we'll just set it to broken. When we hit play and the player plays, they don't work. Well, okay, this is that's the motion detector one. Remember, it's the same model. But you get what I'm saying is outside in our editor, we get to see, we get a nice bright level. We can make it look realistic because that's what the building would actually be. But of course, the haunted scary version, yeah, the light's there, but it doesn't work. Okay, that's awesome, but let's put them on a switch so the player can turn them on and off. All right, next to BP light, I'm gonna create a new one. Uh, it's gonna be an actor as well. We're gonna call this BP underscore switch. We're gonna open that bad boy up. I don't think there's a switch by default in the Unreal Engine starter kit. So let's check, static mesh, we'll just do SM underscore switch. Um, static mesh switch lever yeah i didn't think so so because we don't have a switch this sucks i'm just gonna do like you know what we'll get a static mesh soon but for now our switch is gonna be the sm chair that comes with the uh, default engine I don't know why the shaders aren't loading, but they are applied to it. So other than that, that's really all we need. Go over to your event graph. Actually go to the class settings. Remember it's the thing at the top with the gear. Uh, we need to add the interact interface, which <laughs> it's trying to compile the shaders, but now is not the time. I was on the wrong one. All right, interact. Uh, interactable interface, we're gonna hit save and compile. So now whenever we throw out our line trace by channel, if you remember what that is, that's when we interact with things, we shoot out an arrow or a line. We will be able to hit this and then send it a message. So for now, let's go ahead and hit delete on all this. Uh, we do need a variable called lights. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the variable type BP underscore light, which is that thing we created. Uh, we'll make we get an object reference. We'll right click it to make it an array. And we're gonna open the eyeball to make it public and we're gonna hit save and compile. Then what we need to do is create another variable and just type in the word on with a question mark. I'm gonna make that a Boolean, uh, save and compile. And I will also make that public. So save and compile again. And we're gonna create a custom event and we're gonna call uh, turn lights on. We're gonna create another custom event called turn lights off. And we're gonna create another custom event called init, which of course, I'm just gonna put that at the top. We've got turn init, turn lights on, turn lights off. Uh, and then we need I think for now that's good. Okay, so we're gonna check on immediately, which by the way is currently set to an array. If yours is an array as well, don't make it an array. Just turn that off. If it, if it has to run the thing, it runs the thing. We don't need it to be an array. Save and compile. So we're gonna run a branch. We're gonna plug in on. And then of course, guess what? If on is true, we need to turn lights on. If it's false, we need to turn lights off. Gonna leave a comment. Uh, when the game starts, turn lights on or off, depending on what we decided in the editor. Now I'm gonna hit P and click, which gives us the event begin play. Let's go ahead and call, have it call the init. Then for turn lights on, remember we already have the code set up in the lights on whether they're, how to turn them on or off or not. So all we have to do is pull lights out. We're gonna do git. And then we have this array, so we're gonna do a for each loop. So a for each loop. Um, and then out of array element, we're gonna type in turn on, because remember, that's how we get the lights to turn on. And that's what we'll do with the loop body. So it should look something like this. Then out of completed, uh, pull over this and hit set. And we're gonna set 
uh, this to on. So we are now on. Now we're gonna do something pretty similar. So I'm just gonna grab lights and the for each loop, copy and paste it. Plug that bad boy in like above. But instead of the, uh, instead on the array element, we're gonna turn off this time. Plug that into the loop body. And of course, out of the completed, we are going to set on to false. And now the lights are set to off. Now you're probably wondering why does it matter if the switch knows that they're on or off? Well, because when we hit the switch, we're not actually going to call turn lights on or turn lights off. We're going to call a toggle, which will then decide whether to turn them on or off. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in custom event and we're just gonna do toggle lights. Uh, we need a branch, we need on. Get it all nice and plugged in. And then of course, we're toggling the lights. So if they're on and we toggle, well then we need to turn them off. So turn lights off. And at a false, we want turn lights on. Let's go ahead and create a couple of comments. We'll comment both of these. Um, run for each loops on the arrays for turning them on and off. Then on toggle lights, we're gonna create a comment. Um, choose, or here, toggle the lights on or off depending on the on variable, which of course gets set after they've been turned on or off. So let's go ahead and hit save and compile. And for now, I think that's it. No, it's not it because we need to have one more thing. What happens whenever they interact, right? Because right now interacting would do nothing. So we need to do, we need to type in our interact and you're gonna see event interacted. That's the one we need. So whenever we interact, what do we wanna do? We want to toggle the lights. Also, I'm really full of energy and uh, I'm moving kind of fast today. I'm really sorry if that's bothersome to you guys. I just feel really good. And I hope I'm still making sense. I really do. With that saved and compiled, let's head back to our now roofed, ceilinged building. And we have all the lights, so let's go ahead and drag in a switch, which is of course a chair at the moment. And on the right hand side, you'll see we have uh, the lights elements, um, or the lights array. We have one, two, three, four, five lights in here. So I'm gonna click one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to go through and pick every single light out and add them to this array. There, so all the lights have been added to the array. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and set these three lights over here to not broken. So these are no longer broken. Um, and let's click on the um, chair here and the lights are set to off. So as soon as we load, because of how we have our initiations set up, no matter what, all these lights are gonna be off when we hit play. So we're gonna hit play and it's gonna be dark in here. But if we go up to the chair and we click, now you'll see that all the lights turn on. We click, all the lights turn off. However, what happens if the lights are broken? Is that is that code working? So all the lights are off, but when we hit click, look, it's broken, so that light will never turn on. I freaking love game dev, dude. This is so fun and cool. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.